Okay, welcome back to the lecture series of manufacturing automation. Let me remind you that we in the last class we have discussed about the production and the throughput time. So, we have seen that the throughput is the time taken for an assembly to be completed. And uh, also one fact that I would like to once again repeat that uh, an, in an assembly line whether it is in line or the rotary one, each time is indexes will get one complete assembly. This you have to keep in mind. So, the uh, to compute the production rate one has to know only the uh, indexing cycle time. If you know the indexing cycle time, we will be knowing what is the production rate because each time we know that it, it indexes, we get one complete assembly. Okay. Whereas, we said that the throughput time is the time taken for making a complete assembly. So, therefore, the throughput time will be equal to the production time and into the number of stations. So, number of stations will be immaterial while considering the production rate. Whereas, in considering the throughput time, we have to have the production rate into the number of uh, machines, number of stations. In, in an example, we have seen that uh, if we want to consider the actual average production rate, it will be very high if we do not consider the line breakage in case of automated assembly in the uh, production flow line. And we have seen in that example that if we have 450 units per hour, ideally we could have get, we could have got, then for one malfunction in 100 cycles, we are actually getting the uh, percentage downtime as 86.3 percent, which is very high. Okay. Then in that example, we said that uh, the station breakdown basically happens because of the improper uh, tolerances or improper uh, parts which go into the assembly and it stops the machine. So, the subsequent and the uh, adjacent machines also get uh, suffered. So, therefore, if we can improve the uh, product quality in that case, we have taken in that example that suppose we have instead of 1 out of 100, we have 1 out of 10,000 cycle malfunctioning, then it is improving drastically again and the percentage downtime reduces to 18.4 from 86.3 percent, I am just reminding you. And therefore, the production efficiency goes up to 81.6 percent. Okay. So, uh, through this example, I wanted to say, say show that the uh, machine breakdown uh, has to be considered while discussing or while taking care of the uh, production flow line for the assembly. Next, we started discussing the vibratory ball feeder and we said that um, for small engineering parts which are majority in the assembly process, feeding the parts to the machine is very important aspect, very important phenomena. And therefore, the feeders which actually do that those have to be considered, those have to be designed in a proper way. Here there is one minor point that I would like to mention right away here that parts have to be fed to the machine, not only uh, fed to the machine, but the parts have to be fed in a right orientation for example. What I mean to say is that suppose we have a part which has to go like this. Okay. If the part is coming like this, it has to be reoriented because it will not, if it goes like this and comes to the machine, again the machine jams. It cannot go in this orientation to the machine. It is desired orientation is only this for example. So, if the part is coming like that, either it has to be rejected from the track and let it go again right when it comes in the right orientation or it has to be reoriented. So, therefore, the, uh, the responsibility of the ball feeder uh, is, uh, is very serious in the sense that it will not only feed the parts, it will feed also, it has, it has to feed also in the right orientation. Vibratory ball feeder is one of the most important and one of the most versatile ball feeders for small engineering parts. And uh, I told you already in the last class that uh, this consists of a bowl and a base 
the bowl is connected to the base with the leaf springs okay and on in the bowl there is in the base of the bowl there is a uh, electromagnet that electromagnet imparts the vibration to the bowl and inside the bowl there is a track which is inclined to the horizontal and this is spirally going from the base of the bowl to the outlet. So, when the vibration will be imparted to the bowl, each part located on the track will be moving in a short straight almost straight direction which will be inclined to the track with an angle more than the angle of inclination of the track. What is it? I will explain it to you. Now, first of all let us see that why these parts have to ride on the track of the vibratory ball feeder. When the electromagnet imparts the vibration, it will impart two types of vibration. One is the vibration like this that is a vertical axis along about its vertical axis okay. and this is a linear vertical vibration and there is another vibration which will be torsional vibration like this. So, as a cup, coupling these two, what happens is at, as, as the part is going like this, also it is getting a torsion. So, it will be moving like that. That means, this vibration will allow the part to leave the track and as soon as it is leaving that torsional vibration that will help the part to move ahead. So, this will be overall there will be a small straight line vibration of the part, each part which is located in the, um, on the track of the vibratory bowel feeder and this straight line will be inclined to the track at an angle more than the angle of inclination of the track. Okay. All right. Now, let us see what is the mechanics of vibratory conveying. Let us take an example of a small part which is located at the uh, on the track of the vibratory ball feeder. This is the track which is inclined to the to the horizontal at an angle of theta. Okay. Now, uh, this is when it is moving the m p which is the part weight let us say okay, and uh, mass of the part and this is the vibration overall resulting vibration that we will be getting which is m p a 0 and the omega square m p is the mass of the part. Okay. A 0 is the acceleration and the omega is the angular velocity. So, for sliding up the track to occur if it is if it has to go like that this m p a 0 omega square will have the m p a 0 omega square cos of the psi in this direction in the direction along this f the f is the frictional force n is the normal force because of this there is a friction force of f okay and uh, mu s is the static coefficient of friction between the part and the track okay so this uh, in the direction of the normal force m p a 0 omega square is has a component of m p a 0 omega square and the sin psi okay so uh, this in the n direction that's a normal direction the component which will be uh, which will be coming here is the m p a 0 omega square and the sin psi and in this direction is the cos psi we have the m p g here so m p g will have two components okay one is in the direction of n and another is in the direction of the f all right so this will be mpg sin theta and this will be mpg cos theta all right now for sliding up the track for sliding up the track here in this direction uh, well this component this is mpg sin theta and this component is mpg cos theta so, therefore, in this direction we have the m p a 0 omega square cos psi this component and uh, this component has to be then more because it has to go up the slide up the track has to be more than m p this force which is m p g and the sin theta plus f, f is the friction force because of the normal force acting here. All right. So, for sliding up the track uh, we have to have this condition satisfied where this f 
is the friction force which is mu s which is the static coefficient of friction between the part and the track as I said into the normal force here. Okay. So, the friction force here is the f mu s into n which is normal force. This is equal to mu s okay, mu s into n we can find out this is the is this force minus this force. So, which is m p g cross theta is this component minus m p a 0 omega square and the sin psi. So, this component minus this component is that n. So, we are putting this value here and mu s into n this will give you the f which is the friction force. That means, here if you put in the equation 1, here if you put the value of the f which is this in the equation 2, you will get the equation as m p a 0 omega square cos psi, this has to be more than the m p you are taking and putting the value of the f this value and you are getting this equation. Now, uh, this can be simplified and this is simplified in this way you get the common of a 0 omega square this will be into cos psi plus mu s sin psi which will be more than equal more than g and the sin theta plus mu s cos theta and overall what we are getting is that a 0 omega square divided by g uh, this is more than equal more than mu s cos theta plus sin theta divided by cos psi plus mu s sin phi meaning that this is the condition that has to be satisfied for the uh, part to slide up the track. Similarly, it can be shown that for backward sliding that means, whether the uh, part is going up or going down for going up this is the condition that has to be satisfied and you can show that when the part is going down what will be the condition of these forces it will be reverse and you can you can say that a 0 omega square divided by g this has to be more than mu s cos theta minus sin theta divided by cos psi minus mu s sin psi. So, these are the two conditions which are coming here. These conditions will actually have these conditions have to be satisfied either for the uh, work to I mean for the part to go up the track or for the part to slide down the track. In the sense why it is so important because uh, if you have this, this equation satisfied, in that case you can make sure that the part will go up because the vibration may not be sufficient amplitude or the, frequ uh, the, the um, frequency is of the vibration may not be, may not be uh, you know, enough for the part to go up. So, you have to always see that these conditions are satisfied particularly this condition because we want the part to go up and in case this is satisfying that means, you know that the part will not go up, it will go down. The operating condition of uh, vibratory conveyor including the bowel feeder may be expressed in terms of dimensionless normal track acceleration. This is uh, normal track acceleration which is a convenient way of expressing the um, operating condition. And uh, let us say the normal track acceleration is a n by g n. Okay. Now, this a n by g n is can be found out because the a n which is the normal track acceleration this is given by a n into omega square okay. and this is equal to a 0 omega square and the sin psi all right. and the g n which is the normal acceleration due to gravity this is equal to g and the cos theta g is the acceleration due to gravity. This a 0 this is the acceleration of the of the uh, part on the track. Okay, linear acceleration and the g the which is the acceleration due to gravity this is we know that this is 9.81 meter per second square and therefore, if we are substituting this value a n by g n that you will be getting here in the equation 3 this equation okay, then we will be getting that a n by g n is equal to a 0 omega square sin psi divided by g cos theta you can find out from here okay, that in this equation we are substituting the a n by g n and a n by g n will be a 0 omega square sin psi divided by g cos theta. Okay. 
and that will give you the a n by g n is equal to a 0 omega square sin psi divided by g cos theta. Now, from here you can find out that the normal uh, the dimensionless normal track acceleration this a n by g n this has to be more than the mu s plus tan theta divided by cot psi plus mu s. Okay. So, this where you are getting from you can see that earlier equations okay. and if we equalize this equation uh, equalize this one all right, with this then you will get this for sliding up uh, forward and similarly if we are taking this equation and substituting with this you will get the or substituting with the with the equation when the part goes backward then we will be getting the uh, equation or the condition for the backward sliding. So, this is more convenient to use because this is the component which is actually uh, which dictates the operating condition of the vibratory ball feeder. This is the normal track acceleration and this is the dimension less therefore, it is more convenient. So, therefore, uh, this is important for us that for slide forward sliding we have to have this condition satisfied. In that case we know that the parts are uh, properly going up the uh, track. Now, here one condition uh, you can see that apart from the mu s which is the static coefficient of friction between the track and the part we have two more angles which are important one is the track inclination angle which is the theta and another is the vibration angle. Okay. Now, if we go back to the uh, to this vibration angle is one where this m p a 0 omega square because of the vibration total inertia force this will be making an angle with the parallel to the track angle of the psi which we are calling as the vibration angle. Okay. And the track inclination angle is theta which the track is making with the horizontal. So, initially when I said that because of the two vibrations that is the linear vibration okay, and the torsional vibration the part will move in a short uh, straight line at an angle more than the angle of inclination of the track. Meaning that this is the angle which is apart from the theta they are getting that means, this angle it is moving like this okay, along this direction. So, this angle is more than the track inclination angle. So, therefore, uh, in this we have apart from the mu s which is the in static coefficient of friction we have the uh, track inclination angle and the vibration angle which are important to find out that whether that the normal track acceleration is proper. Okay. So, uh, these angles are actually depending uh, how these angles are determined or how these angles are uh, defined that also depends on us because what happens is the track inclination we can incline, incline the track there is a design. Okay. And the uh, psi which is the vibration angle that depends on the uh, on what on the uh, electromagnet which we have here plus the suspension springs. Okay. In the suspension spring the spring constant and the angle these two factors will define how the vibration will be imparted and these vibrations are actually like this that is the uh, torsional vibration about its vertical axis coupled with a linear vertical vibration. This is the linear vertical vibration and this is the torsional vibration. So, this will depend on once again the suspension springs and the electromagnet. So, therefore, we can actually decide what will be the uh, angle psi which is the vibration angle and this angle is the track inclination angle once again we can uh, decide. So, by deciding the mu s track inclination angle and the uh, vibration angle we can actually satisfy that the normal track inclination sorry normal track acceleration should be more than this equation than this factor. Then only the, the parts will go uh, along the track up that is at the outlet of the vibratory bowel feeder. Now, for values of for example, mu s is equal to 0 0.8 let us take a practical value suppose it is 0 0.8 and uh, we have the track inclination angle as 3 degree and uh, the uh, vibration angle as 30 degree. In that case 
n by g n which is a normal track acceleration must be more than 0.34 for forward sliding. We are getting it from here as you understand. Okay. So, you put the values of mu s is equal to 0.8, mu s is equal to 0.8, theta is equal to 3 degree here and uh, psi is equal to 30 degree, you will get the a n by g n which should be more than 0.34 for the forward sliding and a n by g n more than 0.8 according to that equation for the backward sliding. This is just an example that if it is 0.8 static coefficient of friction 3 degree inclination. So, then it, it has to be more than 0.34. This I am mentioning because while designing the vibratory bowel feeder you have to take into consideration these factors. Okay. Now, once we have uh, these two that means, uh, mu s plus tan theta divided by cot psi plus mu s this is for the forward movement and this one is for the backward movement. So, if we equalize them okay, this will be the limiting condition, limiting condition for forward conveying to occur. What does it mean? That this is the condition at which the part will just start going forward, it is in the limiting position. So, from here we can find out that if we solve this equation, you will get the mu s square is equal to tan theta plus cot psi. So, this is the uh, condition that you are getting. So, from here the limiting condition is the tan psi is more than tan theta divided by mu s. As I said that this is equal to because this is the limiting condition. That means, at this condition the part is neither moving forward nor moving backward, it is in the initial position okay, in, the, in the position just ready to move. So, if it is more than that, that means the part will start moving forward that is the one thing. Now, uh, this can be uh, simplified that if the uh, track inclination angle is small, so we can consider the tan theta is equal to theta and then we can say simplifying way, simplified way that the tan psi which is the tan uh, of the the vibration angle this has, this has to be more than theta by mu s. So, this is the condition that has to be satisfied once again for uh, parts to move forward. So, this is much more simplified because you can see that here we have the theta and we have the mu s which are in our hands in the sense that how much track inclination angle we are giving that is the design criteria and what kind of uh, smoothness we are giving to the track and what kind of parts we are having depending on that we will be getting the uh, static coefficient of friction. So, once we have the theta and the mu s we can take the ratio and we can find out that what is the value of the vibration angle. Depending on that we can select the suspension springs, the angle of the suspension springs and the, uh, the spring constant. Okay. These are the suspension springs at which angle you are actually attaching the bowl with the base and what is the spring constant that is material okay? and what is the electromagnet of course, that will depend that will actually be selected based on the uh, psi that you would like to have for the forward movement. Now, you mind one thing that the parts are of different uh, materials. For example, there are aluminum parts, there could be steel parts, there could be parts with a rougher a surface or with smooth surface. So, that will actually determine your mu s which will be the static coefficient of friction between the parts and the track. So, depending on that you will actually get the psi which is the which is the vibration angle and you can design accordingly the electromagnet select the electromagnet and design the suspension springs and the angle of the suspension springs. Uh, once again uh, here it is the, the design aspects that we are considering. In the design aspect the basic thing that you have to take into consideration is the parts should be moving along the tracks, along the track inclined track which is inside the bowl and the parts have to come out of the of the bowl. Okay. Because these parts from here they will actually go to the machine for assembly, this is small engineering parts. So, if you see actually a bowel feeder in the, in practice you will you will see as if the whole ball is moving whole track is moving it seems that as if the track is moving it's actually not the case on the track the parts are actually moving and the track is stationary 
but if you actually see this it is a mirror it is a, a very good design you will you will you will see that as if the ball is moving okay this is a concept but actually the parts are moving along this so as now you know that for parts to move along the track ultimately what we need is this condition to satisfy okay that means accordingly you have to design your track inclination angle accordingly you have to design the springs accordingly you have to select the electromagnet the rest of it i will discuss in my next class thank you very much Thank you.